In this episode, I have a very special guest for you. Her name is Sarah Di Bartolo. She is a life and health coach. But before she became qualified and started working with clients herself, she was a client of mine and came to me in a really intense time where she was going through a lot of painful digestive issues, particularly she was getting reflux, she couldn't sleep because of the acid reflux, Uh, she had indigestions, random stabbing pains, you name it, she experienced it and it was all very much fueling and driven by anxiety. She was really stuck in this cycle that I know so many of the women I work with can relate to and you guys listening on the show as well. And so I thought I'd bring Sarah on to share her story and show you how you too can move through this and you don't have to be stuck in this cycle. We'll talk about what that gut and anxiety connection is like in real life terms, what it was like for Sarah. And we'll talk about some tips and things that helped along the way. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Okay, let's go to the show. Sarah, welcome to the show. I am absolutely thrilled to have you here. Yeah, thank you. I'm so excited and like nervous. I mean, like literally a few seconds before this, I was doing like a breathwork calm down and like you were just sitting with me in silence. I'm like, I need to be with myself for a minute because I was feeling nervous. It like, was so beautiful to witness that and watch you hold yourself through your own, like the ang- anxious feelings rising up there, the nervousness, and just yeah. watch you ground your own nervous system. And how long did that take? Seconds. 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 Just being with the belly breath and the chest and like at the same time and feeling where it's going into and then also knowing that there is another woman on the other side like there and waiting for when I'm ready and holding that space and I instantly felt this like little calm realm like just come through like it's simple things like that you know so So it's nice well we've spent enough time together for you to know I'm the safe person to chill out and breathe with (laughs) yes yeah 100% So Sarah, for those who don't know, I mean, by the time everyone's listening to this, there'll be an introduction, but we worked together and have been through some cool stuff together (laughs) over the time. (laughs) And it's just so awesome to reach this place where here you are, you really are the master of your anxious mind. Doesn't mean we don't feel anxiety sometimes, but we know what to do when it comes up. And I'm just so excited to share your story with people and let them know where, you, where you've come from and where you're at now. It's, it actually blows my mind that you're helping people to helping them to work with anxiety and to take care of their health and their well-being. It's seriously a beautiful thing that you're doing. Thank you. I mean, it's like even thinking now, like two years ago, working with you and healing myself and my mind and body to now being on the other side and being a healer as well and it's like it's even riveting right now like in 2020 I said to myself I'd love to one day be on a podcast with Georgie I said this to my partner did you (laughs) maybe one day that like I would go on there we could chat about something but it just felt so like far away I thought it couldn't happen and then like here I am today and I'm like what do you mean this is oh so my cool God. I didn't so know that. you you saved that you didn't tell me that before we did this <laughs> <laughs> I did I was like it was insane like when you emailed me like and even messaged me to do that I was like what I said to my partner Matt I'm like what I'm like this is what I said in 2020 what do you mean oh my god yeah it was the best feeling ever and I was just like I went all red and I'm like this is like I manifested this oh my god like seeing it as it goes and this is like such an honor so I'm really happy (laughs) if there's one thing I love more than creating my own desires and putting them out there in the world and watching some of them not all of them come to fruition (laughs) we always have some that we're like still waiting on that one but it's being a conduit for that for others as well I love it that's cool (laughs) okay so let's like ground everyone and take us back Sarah to where this journey began for you because I feel like before you came to me it's like you had gone through such a big you were in the middle of like 
big life transition and then we kind of like <laughs> guided you to the other yeah. side of that um take us back to where you were before you you came and found me okay so I guess because before you I kind of was hitting my rock bottom and it was the most like so hard to explain the most like confusing time of my life and also the most scariest time because I had my health and anxiety which I'd never really noticed I experienced before all kind of came on me at once it was almost like this vicious grinder of chasing my own health and that was for about a good year so I'd say 2019 would probably be the pit stop where everything started to come up but I didn't feel it until 2020 before working with you so a snapshot into my life at 2022, 20, I just got into a new relationship, leaving a toxic one that I left. I just started a new job at Victoria's Secret. I was amongst the management team for a few years anyhow. And it was a very high demanding job. And at that same time, I was, you know, trying to like look after my health, kind of recovering from like disordered eating with like dieting, trying to go to the gym and just do the so-called busy life that I thought I was like living for. And then throughout that year, I actually got tonsillitis for the first time ever in my life. And it became so chronic that I had to go on six rounds of antibiotics before the doctors were like, yep, we're gonna take them out now. And during that time, I was still chasing my tail, trying to go to the gym, trying to eat well, all amongst being on antibiotics. Like I just didn't think to stop or to pull back. Um, and then once I had my tonsils out, my life just wasn't the same. Like I felt like my health issue, like health issues started to come up more for me where I was feeling more fatigued and I was like trying to hack that in the year and still wanted to go to the gym and do what I had to do. And I was working such long hour shifts at a, a shifts at a job that I liked at first, but I started to hate because it was so micromanaged wearing an earpiece all day, hearing people talk to me in my ear and serving customers. Like it was a lot. So you um, had to have like another person's voice in your head. Yeah. Of, like, it, your own. <laughs> it was enough just to have yours, isn't it? <laughs> it was like, I'd be speaking to a customer and I'd be like helping them like find their perfect bra fit. And I'd be hearing in my ear, like, Hey, like we're actually looking for this size. Do you know where it is on the floor? And I'd be in like talking a conversation. So it was kind of like, there was the voice in my ear of someone else, my own head, and then a conversation with the customer. It was completely, I don't even know how I had space my own thoughts besides a toilet break or my lunch break at this rate. Um, so I feel like I was pretty distracted from myself. And then as the fatigue kind of came on, I knew that I didn't have a lot of energy. I was always feeling really tired. I just felt like things didn't feel right. And from doing all of like, the fitness life and like eating well I was like I should be feeling better than this why not um and then it kind of got towards the end like the end of that year in about September where I was like I knew that there was something else for me than doing this job I wanted to look into like you know maybe studying something because I've been in retail for five years and I was like I'm done now I want to try something new and at that point it was the pivoting point of realizing how my family came into the picture of how they saw my life. And it started to bring up emotions for me about how I felt about myself and my self-worth and, you know, asking for opinions and all of this. And I think at that time I was trying to find myself amongst dealing with my own health issues and it started to bring me a lot of stress and I just didn't know what I was doing with my life. And then towards the end of that year, I started to get really random gut issues and it was, I've never experienced it before ever in my life. Like the only gut issues, if I ever experienced it was if I ate like a really carby meal and I'd feel really bloated, but then it'd go away. But this was different. This was like, I'd start to get indigestion when I would be doing a workout, but I ate like two hours beforehand and I'm like, what's going on? Or I'd get intimate with my partner. And, you know, if we were, you know, having sex I would feel that like my stomach would start to feel like there's like liquid in there or there's food in there and I like you know it was the most scariest feeling in my life because I'm like I had to stop halfway through if we got intimate because I'm like I'm scared I'm going to be sick and all these little things started to happen and food intolerances came along 
couldn't eat onion, couldn't eat garlic. And I was like, what is happening here? Like, it was just so surreal and so bizarre. And then at the end of December, there was probably about two traumatic instances that happened in that month. And it really tipped over the edge of my nervous system, which I now see it now. But I actually have a really big fear of vomiting. And it's been a fear that's been there for so long. And I had two instances where it was my niece and my partner who threw up at that time, separate times. And how I was cared for in that moment with my family, it was just... I felt like I had to deal with it all by myself because since they're nurses, they were like, yep, I've got to attend to this, got to help them, help that. Sarah, it's fine. They're fine. Can you help out? Can you go do this? And I was in pure shock in that moment, um, trying to like, you know, look after myself, but I was in such literally just crippled fear. I didn't know how to like look after myself in that moment. It was yeah. so traumatizing. Um, it really brought up that trauma response for you to see that happening. And then you were yeah. completely ignored. Completely ignored, um, you know, and it's just like, you know, Sarah, like you got to get over it. Like this person's sick, like go do this and that. And they're like, Sarah, what are you going to do when you have kids? What are you going to do? And it was all just this, like, I guess having the fear was like this shameful thing and they didn't know how to manage me with it. And I think for so long, since I haven't known how to do that, it was just my nervous system came to a halt. Um, and Did you since, feel frozen in those moments, Sarah? Yeah, oh my God. I remember it for both, for both when my partner was unwell, it was literally, that was Christmas Eve. And when we were there at the dinner table, he actually had really bad food poisoning that day, which we then found out, but he collapsed like on my lap at the dinner table. And I was in absolute shock. He collapsed like on my knee because he was pretending to, he was like, not pretending, sorry. He was getting something underneath the table from what I thought. And his head just didn't move on my, like on my knee. And I was like, oh my God. And it just struck me after like a whole work week of busyness with Victoria's Secret, doing crazy hours, I did a really long shift that day. And then it was just absolute panic um, where my family, like my mom, my sister were tending to him. I was in pure shock, but I guess I had to really deal with everything myself. It was like this self-sufficient moment, but I didn't know how to cope. Um, and meant to have this support network around you. You're literally in the bosom of the family. Also, yeah. I wonder how many Christmas dinners actually go that way. Like, so, yeah. like I it's think, very rare. I mean, no, I think that's a really common thing. Like, we'll actually... tell the story of like this perfect Christmas and everyone gets along. But <laughs> you get families together, and mm. you know, shit's gonna hit the fan. Like, something's gonna happen, <laughs> whether someone's collapsing or Something. someone's having an argument. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it was very scary for me. And then obviously I was making sure that he was okay, but he went to the bathroom. And I think when I went to go get something near that, he's like, Sarah, I've actually just thrown up. And I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Okay. And I was just in literal fight or flight, but I was like at that like flea state where I just didn't know what to do. And my family were very like, calm down, calm down. And that whole like night, I just wasn't asked if I was okay. Like Matt, the beautiful soul, like he was so sick, but he just wanted to know if I was okay. And I couldn't deal with it. And that night I literally had to ask his family who came to get him if I could be taken home because I couldn't stay there the rest of the night. And I'll never forget, um, you know, my sister saying to me, you know what, Sarah, if you want to go home, just get an Uber home. Um, you know, it's Christmas Eve, you should be here. Like, this is a special time for us. And it's like, in my world, it was so like, I wasn't even worrying about that. I was trying to like, you know, tend to myself, but I didn't know how to. So, well, anxiety um, can be so all consuming and paralyzing. Yeah. And you can't see the outer context that other people can see. And I, what's so, what I, I love that you're describing this because there'd be so many people who can relate. And it's just that, that way that when people around you don't understand, you feel even more isolated in your experience that you're having internally. It's invisible. No one can see it. No one can yeah, feel no. what you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's how it, like, that's how it felt. Um, you know, and I, like, I get that, you know, they would have wanted to tend to someone who's sick and I think there was that part of me that's like I want someone to tend to me because I don't know how to tend to myself for this mm. um and yeah fear of vomiting so situational it's so situational so 
it's a hard one to move through and it's something I'm actively working on myself um you know but that was a huge moment for me and like since that day my nervous system changed and I started to notice this as January came on in February where I was sort of knowing I was more pedantic about not getting sick and like I was fearing surfaces more like all the heightened OCD parts of it were like coming in hot and heavy um, until it hit about February where I got heart palpitations for the very first time in my life and I was like I remember I was at my partner's house and we were having like a nice dinner and all of a sudden I started to feel my heart race as I was just sitting there and I'm like why is it racing? What is going on? Like, I've never felt this before. And the only associations I pair with that is I'm going to be sick, like that racing feeling. And so I was just like trying to investigate what it was, but I panicked. And I'm like to my partner, Matt, there's something wrong. I don't know what's wrong with me. I have all these palpitations. I'd call my mom. I'd talk to his mom and, you know, try to settle me down. And eventually it passed. But I'd noticed that I'd get more of these as time went on. And I think it's hard to like remember all of it, but I knew that that was pairing with a lot more food intolerances as it went on, a lot more digestive issues, like upper digestive issues was coming in. And when indigestion and reflux came through about a month later, it just sparked up that phobia of vomit all over again. And it was like that what's wrong with me I don't know what's wrong with me um and then it like yeah it kind of was leading me a little bit to you down in March I finally quit my job because I wanted to you know study something else I was going to lean towards nutrition um and yeah but I knew that my health wasn't right so I went to see so many doctors and gastroenterologists and specialists and I just never got the answers that I was looking for it was all down to anxiety and apparently I had the worst case of gastroparesis that they've ever seen in their life and it turns out I never did <laughs> when I worked with you I remember when I came to you too I think it was through Instagram and yeah, I, I remember yeah. I can still remember your first message and you were just like in you know dire straits with the reflux which is that yes. for those who don't know it's when the acid from your stomach starts moving up your esophagus and sometimes some of the contents of your stomach too but it feels like this burning sensation or it can feel like pain it's yeah. really really uncomfortable and it can come with nausea as well and there's a link with anxiety for sure yeah it was it's such an awful feeling um it's literally like regurgitation in your throat it's really not nice um and that was happening pretty much every day for me. Um, and it was really scary because it was happening pretty much all day with every meal. I was starting to not eat as much. Um, I was going on such long walks to try and get away this feeling. I'd walk for like an hour or so to try and get away the reflux and the feeling of it. Um, it was just the most scariest time of my life honestly and, and so, I Sarah how did it feel yeah. when you went to all of the experts the gastroenterologists and things and the specialists and they gave you certain medications and things but not really yeah. those answers no I, I felt like I wasn't heard or listened to or like understood like it just sort of I was always looking for someone who was really empathetic and who, you know, held space me to feel understood and, you know, to talk about it. And going there, there was just such like loose solutions, but they were just so close ended and simple. And I'm like, no, like, this is not as simple as you think. Like my first, I think doctor's appointment, like there was, you know, he listened to what I had and he's like, okay, cool. Take like Benefiber and then take this tablet um, for stomach pain, even though I didn't have stomach pain, but it somehow helped for him <laughs> in his own head, um, you know? And then when I started to talk about anxiety, he's like, you know, like, I want to put you on SSRIs and all this stuff. And I was just like, no, I don't want this. And to him, that was the only answer. And, you know, same with my family, my family, like, you know, Sarah, I think you got to do it. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. There was just this, this, this no. And it was so hard because I really did not have support very much around my decision-making. And that felt even worse. I felt so alone with what I felt. Um, my partner was probably the only support system, if anything. Yeah. And then I finally got the referral for the gastroenterologist and, you know, we did some testing, we did a gastroscopy, 
Then we did a gastric emptying test where I had to drink this unruly vanilla little shake thing with scrambled eggs and lay down for two hours. It was not nice. <laughs> um, and then I got the results back and he was just saying I had the worst gastroparesis he'd ever seen. I believe gastroparesis is when there's like a dysfunction with your stomach emptying your food properly. Yeah. And, and I mean, um, a simple way we could yeah. describe it is like everything's kind of come to a halt. It's like paralyzed. Yeah, it's paralyzed. Yeah, it just doesn't know how to do it anymore. Yeah. yeah. Which was so... very interesting. And I hope you don't mind me adding this part of the story. Yeah. But I remember one of the first medications you were taking was a medication designed to get your stomach to move, like your, your, uh, the contractions happening of the muscles of your digestive tract to get things to move. Yeah. And it was kind of like, such. it just, it's such an interesting approach because it's like, do we not ask the question like did this did your whole gastrointestinal system just forget how to move yes and yeah. why did this happen like that that's not we've got to look a bit deeper and so instead of just like pushing it along push it along and take this medication that to me doesn't make a lot of sense yeah it's, i can see why it doesn't i mean it's like yeah they very do treat the symptom not the root cause and getting things back to balance naturally um so yeah, being offered to take that and then just ruling it down to, yeah, but it's just your anxiety. So, you know, take this. And it was that the only answers I had. And I know during that time, I think I, I reached out to you. We had a short free call together and I was kind of emailing you in between and telling you what was going on. And you're like, it sounds like there's like a um, like motility dysfunction going on, but also due to the anxiety to the gut and brain. Mm -hmm. um, I think you referenced like SIBO as well. Like you were bringing up different options. And I even asked him like, you know, do you think it's SIBO? He's like, no, it's not. He's like, what's, what's SIBO? He's like, that doesn't exist. Like that's not, like it's not that. And it's just, <laughs> it's just, it's hilarious because well, we, I mean, tested, we tested you for SIBO, didn't we? Yes, By the indeed. way, before I go further on that, SIBO, for those who don't know, stands for small intestinal bowel bacterial overgrowth. I always get that. I always say bowel, but it's bacterial overgrowth. And it's where there is bacteria growing more so in the small intestine than the large intestine where it's meant to be. And what happens is they, the bacteria there ferment in the small intestine and cause problems because they're producing gas and, and creating all sorts of issues that basically make the whole system of the gastrointestinal tract not work in the beautiful balance that it can be and was before for you, Sarah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was just a very interesting experience, but I knew that I didn't want to go ahead and, and do it. I mean, look, I had one of the tab one or two of the tablets and I felt so sick. Like it made me feel so much worse. And I actually ended up stopping them. And I said to myself, no, I want to find another way. I already had in mind that I wanted to work with you. And I also had my family so against it. Like, no, I don't believe in naturopaths. No, no, no. And I'm like, no, like, I want to do this. I'm like, you know what, Sarah, it's your money, whatever. And I was like, good, I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go do this. I had to listen to my intuition because I really always cared about what my family thought because they were nurses, because I thought they knew better. I'm like, no, like, this is my health. I, I know what's better for me right now. Um, yeah. Can I just say too, I think what was interesting is all along your body was communicating to you too. Yeah. You know, yeah. you took the medication, you tried and it was like, no, nah. no, nah. no, which yeah. is a very brave thing to do without any kind of support around you, apart from your partner at the time to, to really listen and start trusting that that's really brave. And we're not encouraged to do that very much at all. Yeah, no, thank you. It's it can feel really hard to do it. Like I so can relate with any if, with anyone if they're going through that. Um, you know, taking your own limb and trusting yourself. You know, and like even though you don't know the answer yet, it's like it's beautiful to do that instead of yeah doing it because what other people tell you to do. So I had to do it. Um, and then it was honestly the biggest blessing from working with you leading up to that because. I mean, it brought up my own away. I mean, I was going through my own spiritual awakening pretty much um, where I was just in this vicious grinder of like, yep, Sarah, we're going to give you gut issues, anxiety and stuff. And you're going to have to figure this out now. Like my body was like, we're done. You need to, you know, sort this forward. So 
Yeah. 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 You went through quitting your job and going through that. And then what happened? So one of the first things we did on pretty early on, we we got you tested for SIBO. And what was the result? (laughs) It was positive. It was positive for methane dominant SIBO. And I'll never forget that day I got the results in. I was like, yes. Like I said to my mom, look, see, it's real. Like no one believed me. And it was just so like, it was the best thing ever. (laughs) Be like, yes, there's something here. I'm not crazy. Like there's something going on. And again, for anyone listening, SIBO is not something you can diagnose, unfortunately, with just questions or an online quiz or something, or just looking at the the symptoms and going, yeah, I've got that. You have to get the breath test to confirm it. It's the only way. And it's really, really important because it can be other things. And I think what I said to you too, when we got it done, it was like, we have to know if you have this or not. Because if you didn't have it, that's still really important to know because then we can look at other other options, what else is going on. But one of the most likely things for such what you were getting with, you know, it wasn't just IBS, but, you know, it could be called IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, where you're getting um, all sorts of, of digestive symptoms, bloating, discomfort, all weird, reacting to all sorts of foods. Um, 80%, up to 80% of those cases tend to be SIBO. Um, that's what the research is showing. So it's like there's a pretty high chance you've got it. Uh, and unfor- and it's treatable. Yet when, with IBS, yeah. we're not really, not a lot of like treatments to really look at what correcting the system. It's kind of like, let's just manage it, which is, you know, something I'm so passionate about because I'm like, we can do a whole lot to rebalance the system. And, and the real test too, was not just getting the diagnosis, it was getting the treatment, starting to treat you and then seeing how you felt. Yeah. Yeah, which I mean, it was a very intense experience for me, I think, too, and trusting. I remember I had such a fear of trusting herbal remedies and taking things. So I was so petrified. Um, but, you know, you made me feel so safe with it all. And it was so everything you subs- like, um, prescribed to me was so helpful as well during that time. Um, and I mean, when we worked through the treatment, like I started to notice the links between anxiety and my gut, cause I had crippling anxiety, like panic attacks. And the worst thing was whenever I'd experienced anxiety, which would be, it was pretty much, I was like on alert 24 seven, there'd be reflux all day. Any conversations I'd have with people, I would be in utter fear to express myself, to express what was going on because I feared no one got me. And everyone was starting to notice, oh, Sarah's like really different. It's not the Sarah that I knew. And that was even giving me more fear because I'm like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? And so every phone call I had, any interaction, I was trying to almost have the mask on of normality of what people, you know, thought was Sarah in a sense. But I was suffering so much, like, ah. having reflux silently with anxiety at the same time it was awful well what's interesting from more of that like metaphorical metaphysical perspective is the holding in so much and your gut with the reflux it's like the voice in you was like trying to come out anyway like the expression yeah trying to trying to emerge and you'd kept yourself so quiet in your family to keep the peace yeah because no one like no one got me even if i did express what was going on they'd be very like solution based like oh like you know take this or oh Sarah you know if you feel anxious you gotta go out there you gotta go do this and that very like what I should be doing but not the support that I needed like I think around in my life the friends and family I had like they just weren't you know they didn't know how to support in a way that you know was safe for me it was very just about either I don't know how to like I don't know what you need and then just do this or do that and all I wanted to was to feel safe and to feel like you know heard and seen and even just like a cuddle but you know my family's not very much affectionate like that so it was very challenging and amongst COVID I mean it was like a oh gosh an overwhelming potion I felt so lonely I was really going through it alone and trying to navigate my life and just everything was crumbling friendships family relationships like everything was changing and I was so scared and it was the most awful thing having to be so sick and not being understood that I had to pull away from events or 
if when COVID lifted its restrictions, um, you know, or even just talking to friends on the phone, I was, I would avoid it because I always would suffer reflux and shocking anxiety. And on the topic with anxiety, like, I feel like I never really knew what anxiety felt like. I used to really believe I didn't have it. Like I used to think, and maybe many people feel like this, that anxiety is just this thing that just happens to a few people and it's this mental illness thing and it's just doesn't happen to everybody and I used to believe that you know and until it hit me and you know people were asking like why do you have it like what's wrong with you and I'm like no there's nothing wrong with me just something's here it's I don't know what it is I just now have such a different perspective on it like everyone experiences anxiety everyone it is a fear-based emotion and I think we associate anxiety as something really like psychologist stuff and like tablet things and just like this non-normal thing but it's a part of our daily life like it's 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 with us it's like that fear-based things the uncertainty um it's yeah it's more common than we think and I don't think people realize that definitely and there's all sorts of varying degrees of that and it's I think the whole understanding around anxiety is something that could could shift one day hopefully particularly when we learn to see those messages like for yeah. you it was coming through your, your gut issues of course and yeah there was particularly that incident with I mean taking six courses of antibiotics with the tonsillitis but the tonsillitis was probably from being run down and stressed and all yeah. that high achieving high working really hard that you'd been doing being yeah. top of your game and all of that and, and you know managing so many things all at once and it was your body's way of communicating to you but also the anxiety itself it's it's really interesting and it's not always saying like you're off track in your life like this is bad break up with this person or quit this job but but sometimes it really is and it's not saying quit this job and then you know do nothing it's saying find something that's more aligned for you and it's out there and we, there's something passionate and alive in you calling you to that like that knows that there's a better place for you, something where you, somewhere where you're gonna gonna uh, really fit in. And what I think was interesting in your experience, Sarah, and I see this happen with so many people too that I work with. It's once you did start expressing yourself, standing up for yourself, using your voice, particularly around your family, but also friends and things, you notice that some of those relationships didn't function as smoothly, or you know, didn't they? things started to erupt in in uncomfortable ways yeah 100 percent. and it, it can feel scary it can feel it's it's almost like you're grieving relationships that don't work out anymore I remember that that's like what you told me once when you know I lost a lot of friendships I mean even parts of my family into my family I don't talk to anymore because they were like you know who is this version of Sarah I don't like her she's fake like who is this person now and that was a hard time you know, and even I think you and I had a chat where there was a friend of mine who was like, you're not the same Sarah anymore. Like, where is she gone? <laughs> In my head, it's like, this is me now. Like, you know, so many people like think that we don't change or like, you know, and some people like stay the same. And they're those people who can really pull you back to be that version of that they're used to because they're not used to that new version of you or whatever it is. Well, that version was convenient for them. Yeah. For them. How interesting that they would call who you are now or what what you've changed yeah. into fake. Fake. Yes. What you felt you were being before was fake. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. I massive people please. I love to fit in. I love to even conform my personality around different people so I could feel comfortable with them. So they could you know like me. It was insane. And until I spoke up for myself and you know did things my way, everyone was like who the hell is this Sarah? Like, like, you know, I know who the real Sarah is. I'll never forget that. I've been told that from one of my sisters, um, you know, I know who the real Sarah is. Like this version here is fake. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a lot. It was a lot. But I mean, during that time, it taught me so much about who I really want to be around. And it kind of showed me a little bit of their colors as well. I'm like, wow, like it just, yeah, showed me more of me and who I want to be around and, you know, who I want to limit that time with as well too let's go back a little bit to what it was like going through the SIBO journey because it wasn't all smooth sailing was it 
Oh, no. <laughs> As we were, once we commenced no. the treatment, there were certain rounds to go through. There were certain moments that we almost like, yeah, hit some challenges. Yeah, we did. It was very hard. I've never been on something like that before. And I think the symptoms I experienced through it were hard. Um, and the emotional part was hard as well. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, look, it was unique to say the least, but I mean, like, yeah, it was definitely, it definitely had its, its challenges with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember times where you were really starting to doubt that process and it was like, and I was just like, this is just how it is, but we're going to get there. And so being somewhat like on the other side of that now and having the SIBO under control and, and, you know, really trusting your body. Mm. What's it like looking back on that experience now? Oh my goodness. Like it's, you know, if I was to be in her shoes again, like Sarah in 2020, she would, she literally would not believe that she would be where she's now. She'd be so proud as well. Um, It's crazy. The power of the body that it can actually heal when given the chance. And I think like, you know, back then I didn't believe that I could. I really thought I'd live with it for the rest of my life. Um, You know, I used to go on Google and read stories and people had it for years, but I was so thankful and trusting of my body to learn, you know, how to like, how to do that and, you know, feeling the benefits from it and realizing how in, in tune and connected the mind and body are. And that was such a big key for me, especially the mind and the gut. I really thought gut health was just healing the gut, just yeah. gut stuff. That's it. Um, but to be honest, I, I noticed the biggest shifts when I actually worked on my mind as well as the body. Like I really thought they weren't together, but they are. And that's what really helped me heal. Cause at that same time, working in treatment with you, I was working on how to manage anxiety, how to better my mindset. Cause I never realized the power of my mind actually impacted the, the healing of my body. Yeah, because we worked together, we did one-on-one sessions and then you went on yeah. to the anxiety reset program as well. Yeah, yeah, I did. In like yeah. September, it was the yes. end of year round. Yeah, that's right. Is there a key takeaway from going through the anxiety reset program that you wanted to share with anyone, with our li- people listening? I, I always said our listeners, but yes, I yeah. guess that's what they are. <laughs> yeah, um, there was one part that I loved um, I think you even, there's a quote about it too. Um, A thought is just a thought and a thought can be changed. I think it was about beliefs. Is that the one? Yeah. 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 That's just a thought. That's it. Yeah. Um, And learning the power of the inner critic and the mind and like how that like, you know, communicates with you and how you can work with that. And when I started doing work on that and talking to my, like like reframing my self-talk and noticing my internal dialogue and that part of anxiety, it really helped me take back so much more control of how I thought. And that had an effect on how I felt. Um, It was insane. Like learning about that was amazing. Like I feel like we don't even get to, we're not even taught stuff like this, (laughs) you know? know Uh, It's amazing. You know what I love? It's like you really came to me with with the gut issues kind of leading leading the way of like, this is my biggest thing that I need help with. And the anxiety that that was driving, it was kind of the two. But what came became more and more what we worked on was you know we'd sort of touch up what was happening with the gut like we might need to adjust a thing here or there but more and more we were just talking about yeah your mindset your beliefs your emotional well-being and all of those that that deeper inner work and i love how these physical symptoms that can go wrong and so commonly it is gut stuff or digestive issues how that actually leads us into doing this deeper work yeah, hundred percent. It's like it's because your emotions obviously is paired samely like with the mind. Like that all has a massive impact. Even on another part, you mentioned the vagus nerve, right? And I love working with the vagus nerve. And now even realizing how vagus nerve with emotions and mindset actually affect the gut and vice versa. Like I think you even did a podcast where you did like a Q and a, and there was a question about gut and anxiety issues is the chicken or the egg. I think I asked that question. I don't know if it was me or someone else. Um, it is chicken or the egg. And, and like, it's kind of, you can't just do one. It's yeah. both at the same time. 
totally and they really do need to be worked on together and what what i love though is that in the way that i see and visualize and conceptualize anxiety and the way we build our resilience you'll you'll know there's nine components of our resilience shield and gut is just one of them yeah but it's often the (laughs) gateway that opens up the rest of the healing that gives us that deeper resilience going forward so what's what's anxiety like for you these days Seth? i mean look she's still here she's still here with me all the time she doesn't go away like i mean it's there's not this thing we get rid of her we don't get rid of anxiety we don't get rid of the inner critic but we work with it and we learn to manage it we learn to quiet the mind it's all about literally it's that conscious practice um so for me i mean it was here before our session (laughs) during the session um you know so now it's more how i work with like with the anxiety that is different um, and I feel so much more in control of it. There are those times where it comes in it through the day, but I now know what to do. And like through working with your program, through my own healing and self-development, I have learned how to master that now as what you do with women. So yeah, it's always still there, but I'm kind of happy that it's here, to be honest. I wouldn't want to be this really relaxed person you know and like don't not like not have it because it's a part of our life and I think with our like nervous system and anxiety it's about building that resilience it's not that we don't experience it it's building that healthy flexible nervous system so we can adapt to our life's stresses and and things like that yeah really it's like it's just a little like warning signal just being like hey like you might want to go like get a better sleep and like all the other things yeah you need to move your body we haven't we've sat down you need to move (laughs) yeah like imagine if you know when you're you've got one of those cars that's got the parking sensors and it beeps when you're like about to get a car wouldn't yeah. you rather have your thing that beeps instead of like hitting <laughs> stuff? And you know, yeah. it's there with and that's again, I, I I never want people to misinterpret that that idea that like anxiety means there's something wrong. It mm. just means there's something out of balance that can be addressed. And there's all sorts of things that that can be and ways that we can look at that. And so I love that, Sarah. And I really think the key what you what what you what I see as a huge transformation in you is being okay with having it there. And so you're not anxious about the anxiety and you're not like, there's something terribly wrong with me. It's like, life's good. And yeah, sometimes there's some anxiety and whatever. Yeah. And like, you learn how to work with that and like embracing it almost. Like it's, if we're ashamed of that part, we're kind of closing off and really pushing down, you know, that natural emotion that we're meant to feel. And look, some people may experience it more than others. Like our brains are all wired so differently. But there are people who are like you out there. There are people who relate with this. And I think it's it's the beauty in this work as well. And we can teach people so many things from it as well too. For sure. And so looking at where your gut was when we first worked together to where it is now, what's that change been like? Well, I mean, I don't have SIBO anymore, which is amazing. Um, I can happily like sleep properly I used to when I had SIBO I had to be propped up on pillows every single night because the reflux the emptying of my food wouldn't do it properly I'd have to sleep upright now I can like sleep (laughs) better in bed I do want to say yeah is like that was that's very much SIBO doesn't always come with reflux but it did very much in your case in my case some people would have it and not need to be propped up on pillows but yeah that's where we were at with you (laughs) not with me yes um and you know, being able to have intimacy with my partner without this massive fear of, you know, being sick or, you know, things like that. Um, I feel like it's it's amazing because I feel like I can actually like live my life more fully, even as simple as going on a walk. I remember, and as we were just saying, reflux was a big thing for me. I couldn't even go on like a super long walk without worrying about how sick I was and feeling so sick. But now it's like this, it's such a beautiful thing to have a body that feels good again, that feels healthy again. And like seeing how my system could come to balance, like, oh, it, it's a riveting feeling. I can't even describe it. Like knowing that my body could get to here to function better and look like, symptoms still come up for me if the anxiety is there and the stress and I'm overstimulated it comes up it always does and I think it's it's my body's way of telling me slow down or we need to do this or we need to do that so I look at it as a way of it's talking to me 
Um, so that's, that's my signal. And I think, look, over time, when I do build more resilience and become more of that master with myself, there will be so much more relief that I'll experience. But for now, it's like, it's, it's good for the moment. Like, I don't know, I'm really transparent. I still experience it, but not in the same way that I do. Um, but it only ever comes up with anxiety and stress if I'm not caring for it. It's always a journey. And like, we have this always. idea we have to reach some perfect place and where this project that needs to be constantly worked on it's like there's always going to be something and particularly in life there's always going to be something stressful going on like all the potential for that if you think long enough about like stuff in your life eventually you'll start find something to worry about yeah Um, but what i what i think what i find really fascinating for people is how particularly the food stuff and the food intolerances and the way your body responds to food changes depending on how much stress and anxiety is there and it all does thereof. yeah yeah i mean you can tell with days that you can tell your good gut days you're more resilient through anxiety in your nervous system and similarly for me if i am experiencing more overstimulation i feel it my body doesn't digest digest as well but i mean it's through when we are stressed digestion switches off anxiety digestion switches off so when we're in that prolonged time of being we're going to be experiencing it more and if you're in that stage before you eat I mean it's only going to explain it for itself so it's always connected whether you have digestive issues or not that process happens in everybody that whole switching off and stress is there this is where people can get so confused with what foods you're intolerant to or not because it's like oh my god like (laughs) now I can't eat chicken or something and it's like hang on what state were you in emotionally when you ate that before yes (laughs) we tend to always pin it on the food when sometimes it's really not always the food it's something so different sometimes that's such a good point I feel like food's an easier scapegoat to blame more within our control than the emotional stuff right yeah what do we do with the emotions (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's where we go and do the deeper work and actually sarah and i have something very exciting to mention if anyone's listening yeah. and interested <laughs> and you can relate to this journey and you want to know more um sarah is actually going to be supporting me as our beautiful support coach in my next uh program where we're going to be helping women with anxiety and gut issues specifically if you can relate to the gut issues and you want to do the deeper dive there sometimes there's a more unique sort of individualized process that we have to go through that i don't go as deep into in the anxiety reset program so this is like let's go deeper in the gut stuff and really get to the root of those issues things like SIBO and potential potential infections and things like that that could be underlying those issues and get them sorted so that is really exciting and i'm so happy to have you doing this with me sarah yay thank you it's like as you said it's like bizarre bizarrely is that even a word bizarrely aligned that's the one i'm looking for bizarrely works bizarrely aligned yeah um it was amazing to be asked to do it and i think i mean look reflecting on our work together the stuff that i went through and now what you want to do was a really nice fit i felt so honored oh you're just the perfect person and i just love that you know you go through those challenges yourself you come out the other side and now we get to go help people with that too and who better to relate and understand like particularly the intense i mean i've experienced gut issues with anxiety but transient i would say like it's like oh things aren't (laughs) feeling too good today but it's very much linked to an episode of anxiety versus where you were at and so to have that support and that emotional nurturing that you mentioned, particularly when we're, you know, so many of us go with the tough love approach or our families and friends give us that tough love approach. Um, yeah. I think it's it's gonna just amplify that healing for people. I'm just so, so thrilled to have you joining me and supporting oh, me. Oh, me too. I, I feel so excited to like help you and hold space for women who are going through this because I get how lonely it can feel and how different you may feel. And I put different in quotations because you're not different, but how different you think you can feel um, when really you're just a human trying to figure out your life, trying to figure out what's here and you're going to find the answers. And both you and I, Georgia, help are here to help them find that and make them feel safe. <laughs> and we're going to be running this going into Christmas and New Year's and all the holiday time where there's going to be, yeah. well, I would say 
gut issues are like all going to erupt potentially oh, yeah. <laughs> and we want to be able to drink and those kind of things. So um, an interesting time to be supporting people through that, but I think also very, very needed. Mm-hmm. 100%. I mean, there's, there's so much worry around Christmas time, especially if you've got gut issues and you have to go to a big event where there's just platters of food you don't know what to eat. You're freaking out because you're like, I don't want to go because there's nothing I can eat there and no one caters anything for me. What am I going to do? And it's just, it makes you fear a really nice time of year, but then also feeling like, you know, you can't live your life at the same time. So I think having this program around that time is so great because I guess for both you and I can help them identify how they can manage that and then feel still feel like they can have fun without so much fear. Exactly. So yeah, we're going to have a lot of advice and support for that as well. Yeah. So oh, <laughs> I can't wait to get into it and I'll have some more information about it. But Sarah, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your journey and your story and being so open and honest. Like I know, I already know people are going to be messaging me after this episode, like, oh, she's so great. And she was so, <laughs> so relatable. And thank I just you. really honor you for that because it's not easy to come up and share these details of your life and you know Sarah's probably going to get that bit of that vulnerability hangover we spoke about yeah. I was like, you're probably going to get a bit of this feeling like did I overshare that's so normal but it's a gift to give that to others because at the end of the day anyone listening is just going to go wow she's so inspiring and she's just like mm. you give that gift of vulnerability to others where they get to then be vulnerable too and it's just amazing and I appreciate mm. you for that thank you Thank you. Like this was my first time properly sharing and navigating my story. And yeah, of course, as you were saying, there's probably still going to be parts where I'm like, did I mention this? Oh, wait, I forgot. Oh, maybe I shared too much. But (laughs) this was amazing to do it because as I said to you earlier, I know someone's going to relate with it, even if it's just that little bit. And that's all I want is, you know, to bring that value to people and feeling like they're not alone. Because you know, I have have no doubt you've done that for people. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here, Sarah. Thank you, Georgie. Has this episode left you wanting more? Consider joining the Anxiety Reset Program. I'll be there supporting you live each month and weekly videos take you through simple steps that you can implement at your own pace. Over 90 days, we reprogram your mind to reduce negative thinking, release the need to be perfect, build confidence, feel okay with uncertainty, and finally let go. You'll create deep relaxation and calm by addressing your gut health, hormones, nutrition, and more all in one. You really can master your anxious mind. Let's do it together. Learn more with the link in the show notes. Thank you for listening. We have reached the end of this episode. If you enjoy this podcast and you find it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would hit subscribe or share this episode on your Instagram stories and make sure you tag at Georgie the naturopath. But that is all for today. Please be kind to yourselves. Know that you are enough and you are exactly where you need to be. Mm -hmm.